Film Don't Lie Transfer Portal Edition. Dane Young and Brent Rollins from UGASports.com. Presented by Braided Pest Management and ASW Distillery. I don't even know if they're actually sponsoring this, but they sponsored all of our Film Don't Lie for the season. So I'm yeah. going to give them a little. We're going to include them. them. Yeah. We're going to include them. And then we're going to ask them if it's they a Christmas gift to them. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about London Humphreys, the Vanderbilt wide receiver, now turned Georgia wide receiver, announced uh, earlier this week that he would be coming to Georgia to play next season. I have his measurements up here, Brent, 6'3", 186 pounds, really fast. And I think the thing that was most exciting to a lot of Georgia fans is that potentially you get to build with this guy because he still has three years of eligibility beyond like and that's did last year. Yeah, and ideally it's that. And I will say, like, you know, I, I see a lot of times on Twitter that the, the exciting whites conversation uh, as it relates to Ladd and, and Bowers. Well, it's a meme, right? Where it's like it's yes. the photo from the wine store. Yes, and, yeah. and he's not them. Like he's not like don't put the lad comp to him. That's completely not his game. And I think what you're going to see as we go through a lot of these plays is, and especially how Vanderbilt used him, and then also how he was used in general. He's Arian Smith. If Arian Smith decides to transfer, he's that role. Deep threat straight just straight line fast dude yeah don't anyone dare say hunter renfro on this video like <laughs> this is the furthest thing from that and as as mr fowler who's joining us on youtube there also says hair is encouraging like the his elite hair game that is true that's always something i look for uh for sure that and a good name and solid name i mean it's not like it's not lad mcconkey name but no solid name there yeah. Let's get into the video of this guy. We'll make us a little bit smaller over here. First play is one that a lot of Georgia fans should remember, Brent, because uh, like you said, th this was his only catch against Georgia, but it, it made an impression on Kirby Smart, which apparently the way to play for Georgia is to make a play against Georgia. Just ask, and, love it, ask rah-rah. All of it. And what's amazing is we talk about this in film a lot. It, like, this was a you know coverage bust, communication bust from Lasseter and Tyke. And it wasn't anything that he did except for the after the catch part. And I, th I think that's probably what got the attention just as much as anything is the fact that angles were erased and nobody caught him. Like that's when you're like, okay, we, we maybe there's some next level speed there, not just speed that we've seen in previous, you know, previous preparation. Cause he'd actually had a couple big games against Wake Forest and UNLV leading up to uh, this game, but you know, still, that's different level of speed when you see it in person. I'm bringing the uh, video back up because it was not playing correctly like I wanted it to. Okay. Such well, let's just let it roll and let him run fast. Yeah, we let him run fast and run by Malachi Starks here at the end. And I think that's the one you're looking at. It's like, oh, if he can outrun 24 to the end zone, that's the construction site. Yeah, very much so. And that's you have to have some level of that and threat of that to your offense that you can catch something in the 10 yard range. And take it forty. I think it was you know, fifty or fifty in this game. But yeah, that was that. That was the, that was his one catch on three targets uh, against Georgia. Georgia fans know that play. I will tell you, in going to find Vanderbilt video, it is not as plentiful as Georgia video or Alabama video. So uh, there's some plays that we ended up not being able to find. We did find some against UNLV though. Yeah, he had a big game against Wake and UNLV. Over 100 yards and a touchdown against each. I think this is his touchdown here. But this is just. From the slot, which he's, I think, by 80% out wide, but here from the slot, getting a one-on-one. -on -one. Again, much like Arian Smith uh, against Ohio State, getting the matchup on a safety, just being fast and going to open space. And what's interesting is, is again, catch and trying to catch him, but just can't. So there you go. Yeah, and I love that this ball is thrown to where he can attack the open field. He's not waiting on it. He's not slowing down. He's chasing it to the open side of the field. And, and that's a lot of times quarterbacks don't do that. And, you know, one interesting thing to me is that in this transfer portal cycle, we're talking a lot about Vanderbilt wide receivers. And I didn't look at Vandy's passing game and say that was anything special last year. Yeah, no. It is, but, you know, QB issues, inconsistencies at QB. Shepard's a player, though. And, and I, maybe I, he hasn't ended up somewhere or he is. I, I can't remember actually with him. Someone in the chat will tell us to be sure. Yes. Yes. The, everybody knows uh, it's, uh, I follow as much as I possibly can, but don't know. can't remember everything. This is one where 
contested catch situation that you actually didn't see him win very often. That's one of the things like looking at him over the season, like good, just quick out, you know, not he's again, this is not a lad quick route creating separation. This is just, he's given space and he takes it quickly, but that's still a contested catch. It wasn't something that he did pretty consistently on the season, only three of 13 in terms of contested catch situation, which is about actually on par with where Georgia was uh, this season. We, when, we say that he's not like Lad in a lot of ways. He does not have the hesitation moves. He does not have no, but, no. The, the make you miss stuff. This guy's just a runner, and he's really good at that. But yep. again, that's what we say about Arian Smith a lot too, right? He he can do that thing super well. And yep. this is not the greatest quality video here, but this is him against Auburn on a third and fifteen. Yep. Quick slant, just being fast, getting the open space, beating the other guy, beating the beating the safety who's potentially coming down. I do like his get off at the line of scrimmage, though, because sometimes you can get jammed up here and get knocked off your route, and he avoids that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Next one, I think, is just straight speed. Like this, Hawaii. Is, you can't see him. And this is Hawaii, yes. And I think it's a sort of quick little stutter and go move uh, that you can't see at the bottom. But yeah, he's down he's here running, under the graphic, still running by people, like you said. And this is fourth and seven, by the way. That they're just taking a shot to him. Uh, Finding uh, video for Vandy, yeah, <laughs> not not as not as not as plentiful. Hey, we'll look, get to, and Mr. Fowler, we will get to that. Even their stadium was under construction. All right, so yeah. fi finding the right video tools was a, a little more difficult. Um, although there are some other people that Georgia are looking at in the portal that played twenty snaps this year, so it's not to that degree. Like he he played right. at least. Yep, very much so. So yeah, this is just straight up. Speed, good catch over the shoulder. Touchdown. You mentioned this one, the same sort of thing. And yeah. I will say one of the interesting things about this play with him is, yes, the speed is there to go get it once the ball's in the air. But the, the little subtle nudge that he gives right there, like that's that's kind of veteran-y receiver type move that you see. What was uh, that word? Veteran-y? Yeah. I like it. New one. Very, very Luther burden against against Georgia. A little slight nudge. Uh, but again, just speed, putting the ball. And like you said, putting the ball to your speed guys out in front of them like this. This We, we talked about back against Alabama in the SEC championship game to the, the throw that McKinstry almost came back and picked off. Put that thing to the court, to the pylon and let Aaron Smith go get it. Like that's what this guy is. Let the speed win. And this was pretty bold here too because you got – double team coverage here and Vandy's like that's fine like we trust this guy we'll throw it to him so there's confidence in him to yep. make plays and Georgia would would need that kind of confidence as well when I see when I drew on the video there it got you again on for a second that's fine I can fix this quickly well we uh, got we've, we've shown all the positive now now it's time to get to the not so positive because Area, or areas of areas of improvement. Like I always, you know, in a job interview, or if someone asks, "What are your weaknesses?" Well, I have I've, I have certain areas of improvement. You don't straight up say weakness. You always say, uh, "I just care too darn much." <laughs> and one of his areas of improvement, hands. Uh, he had three drops on the season, and you know, you're like, "Oh, that's not very much." Well. In terms of catchable throws, when you look at it from a percentage basis, it's 12.5% uh, in terms of catchable targets that he dropped, which would have been second on Georgia's team to Arian Smith. So, like, got to have these, especially, by the way, especially third and eight, got to have these. When you win like that, you win with speed at the in the move at the top of the route, got to catch that. And when you don't have the wide array of skills that a McConkie does, when these things happen, that's how you lose your your role. And we saw that with Arian Smith this year, like you were talking about. I just mm -hmm. I know people would see this and say, "Well, hey, last year, Lad McConkie in the middle of the season, I'm saying last year, uh, Two years national ago, yeah. championship season, uh, 2022 season, Lad McConkie had drops in the middle of the year. Yeah, but as Lad McConkie, you didn't have people that could replace the other things that he does. The blocking, right. the hesitation moves, the get open, the contested catches. Humphreys is good. He doesn't do a lot of those things. Right. Now, 
That doesn't mean he can't be coached up and get better at those, especially right. if he's in Georgia's program for a while. But we're just saying as he's coming into Georgia, this is not a lead the SEC and receiving type guy. Yeah, and I will say, like, if you think about people who come and transfer to Georgia in the last couple of years with Rod Ra, Love It, uh, even like Cager, Lawrence Cager previously, the route tree for those guys oftentimes, like Ra Ra, Ra Cager specifically, on the outside, very limited. Like he actually gets into uh, a lot of different things with the routes, but uh, it, it's still that speed guy. And this is the one where, like, you see him, he's in the bunch in the head of the bunch. Yeah. This don't fly at Woo. Georgia. You know that. Yeah. That'll and, be pulled off the field very quickly. And 49.9 run block grade. Which, by the way, also is right about where Raw Run and Love It were this past season. I think in year two at UGA, you see, you know, if those two come back, which I, I think they will, but you'll see that jump up. So for him, with the fact that you've got, you know, more years of eligibility and that development, you'll see a little bit of improvement, I think, in that part of his game this season or the upcoming season, and then maybe an even bigger jump the following season. Just anecdotally, I did think that Dominic Lovett did better with blocking later in the season for Georgia in mm -hmm. 2023. Like, I saw improvement from beginning of the year. Outside the SEC championship game. And, and, yeah, and maybe some of it was just the want to. Like, you know, those first couple games, kind of hard to get up for um, that Georgia had on its schedule. I, there's no really excuses for that, but what we do know is that if you're going to be a receiver at Georgia, you have to be a blocker. And there's going to be room for those reps at Georgia this year. And I'm not saying this guy can fill in for Rosemary Jack Saint, but I'm saying with Rosemary Jack Saint leaving, your best blocking receiver is gone. Yeah. And so where do those reps come from? Who are those people? And I think one of those is probably in the portal right now, which we may be talking about soon. Potentially. Um, that is we'll true. See. But if if Humphreys wants to come to Georgia and play frequently, he's going to be have to be a better blocker than what he did at Bandy. But the, the the speed part, the speed is real. Like parents were like all time, like big time track athletes, legit numbers. I think he had some sort of Tennessee record in either like the hundred or the two hundred, something like that in high school. Like legit speed. You saw it against Georgia, and that threat is always needed in your offense. It, there's always a place for it. The threat of it. Shahid says that Kirby saw that play and was like, "Who's that guy?" And then went up to McClendon after the game. Totally believe that could have happened. I uh, mean, <laughs> well, especially like like I said. He had 100 yards and a touchdown in two games prior to the Georgia game. So as they're prepping for the game, hey, this guy's getting deep, getting by people. This guy's getting by people. This guy's getting by people. And then he just ran by us. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Michael Fowler says that uh, Lad McConkey's drops in 2022 yeah. were because his favorite chicken joint shut down in Murray County. Yeah, I'd be upset by that too. I mean, that's the yeah. fuel, man. That's what made you who you are. <laughs> Very true. Very true. Thanks for that uh, nugget, Michael. All right, so that's what Georgia has in London Humphreys. I, I do think, like you say, if if Arian Smith were to leave Georgia, he hasn't. Interesting as, that he hasn't, by the way. As we're recording this, he hasn't. Because he, he walked, like, senior day. Like, he was one that walked, even though this is only his third year. So Yeah, and I think we'd heard some rumblings that he was kind of looking around to see what was out there. And I don't know. But then the Georgia end of the season, he got you know, a couple – good games there at the end you never know and we could see what he does against a florida state team in the bowl game if he plays in that and maybe he uses that as tape to leave maybe he uses that as to start the final year who yeah. knows um but regardless you can't have enough fast wide receivers correct also correct 100 percent correct especially with uh, some of the injury history that Arian Smith had early in his career so this is an also insurance true. policy for georgia of like we can get over the top mm -hmm. promise you that so perfectly stated that's london humphreys this has been film don't lie thank you asw distillery Breda pest management for supporting us as more players transfer to georgia through the portal and we suspect there will be more we'll have film don't lie features on all of those when there is video present yeah. there are a couple that we've heard rumblings and we've looked at and we're like oh they played four plays this season yes it's gonna be kind of difficult so maybe yes. we just hop on here and you get to hear our faces talk about them. hey we might do that in the off season as it is might so. be NFL draft time's coming up, and, and Georgia have some folks in there as well. Uh, Goat Dog, quick question, and we'll sneak in here. Do you think Ra Ra and Dominic Lovett improved since we did Thumb to Line them last year? Uh, yes. At least, but because the starting point was low from a blocking standpoint, the starting point was low. Yeah. 
I, I think I, I think they could have used Lovett differently and better. Rara had injury issues, uh, especially towards the end. Obviously, I, I think they could have used Lovett more and differently, more so down the field than they did. Uh, but outside of that, in terms of the blocking part, it was still a step up for them. I thought middle of the season, Rara was probably as good as I'd ever seen him. Uh, the hype that he had coming into the year, I didn't understand based on his Mississippi State tape. I didn't think he was anything special at State. And that was an offense that threw it around more than what Georgia usually does. Although yeah. this year, I think you could say a little bit differently. And middle of the year, he was really good. He had one game that he was great for Georgia. And he was a contributor otherwise. Got to stay healthy. I think going into next year, love it. Maybe your leading receiver. Potentially, yeah. I think that's true. So... We'll go for that. Uh, and before <laughs> Mike says Kirby needs to hire Hunt Ward for a receivers coach. And that's where we wrap it up, my friends. That's a dog mint classic there. Thanks for watching, everybody. This has been Film Don't Lie for what's Georgia getting in the London Humphreys.